Welcome to the Chavana Boardroom podcast. I am the Chavana Boardroom and we are here to give back to the underprivileged. This is our first ever episode and today we are joined by a guest who is not only doing our first episode but his first ever episode and he's on this journey with us to give back to the underprivileged. We are going into schools, we're going to give tech, we're going to give iPads, we're going to give laptops, we're going to have a tech fund and it is powered and generated by business sponsors. There's a lot of stigmas attached to the underprivileged and growing up on places like council estates and that's what this podcast is all about. So with no further ado, I would like to introduce our first ever guest star of everybody talking about Jamie, yeah. star of BGT, and star of Waterloo Road, George Samson, everybody! That was a great intro, that. <laughs> that was great, that. That's Hollywood shit. That was, that was, that was good. That's, that, 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 was, that was class. You, you think I've done this before? I was expecting miraculous <laughs> so, applause. The TV should have flashed. <laughs> it's just a camera and microphones. But it's how nice, you, this my, is nice and good. How are you, my brother? And, and listen, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for joining us. I, I wouldn't have had it anyway. I told you, this is my first one. It's the first one, and... Um, I'm glad it's this one. I'm glad it's this one. We've taken his virginity. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> In a non-creepy way. So, the, you, you've, we grew up on the same state. Yeah, That's did, why yeah. you were my first target. When we set this up, I absolutely said, I want George Sampson to be on first. Yeah. We we kind of have a personal connection. Our families yeah, yeah. knew each other back on the estate, so you was the obvious choice. But more so, the way that you've inspired millions of people around the world by winning BGT, by doing what you do, by the story that you've got, there was no other guest for me. Right, yeah. Fair. There was no other guest for me. So, well, well, I'm happy it's me. <laughs> Good. I'm happy Good. to be here. Before we get into this, I just need to mention our sponsors. So, we are in the boardroom of a company called Digibean today. Digibean are a Manchester based. It's nice, isn't it? It's plush. It's isn't plush. It? It's yeah, proper, like proper posh. Yeah, yeah. Proper nice. <laughs> We broke the table, but we'll <laughs> um, it's proper plush. Uh, but Digi being a, a, a Manchester-based design and development agency, something that's close to my heart and industry that I've always mm-hmm. been in, and they've given us because our boardroom changed at the last minute, and, and we needed a boardroom. So thank you to Digi for this. Everybody, look up Digi Yeah, and we will let you know about the other sponsor a little bit later on because they are our council estate quirks oh. sponsor. Uh-huh. So we'll tell you a little <laughs> bit more about that as we go. So nice. let's get into it, George. You grew up on a council estate. I did, I did, and I love it, I love it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world, I love where I grew up, I love the people I grew up with, more importantly, because I think the people make the estate, I, I think, I want to say that right off the bat, it doesn't matter where you grow up or what you do, it's the people, and I think when you're in a council estate, because we're so close, everybody's so close, your neighbours, your best friends, so that's, that's the most important thing for me, was the people that I grew up with. I agree, and I think that's what's driven us to do this, because it's the effect those people have on you, yeah. but also... If you flip it around, it's also the effect that the council estate has on those people. Yeah, massively. And there are positives and negatives to that, isn't there? There is, there is. Um, I, I, like I said, I love coming from a council estate. I love that I grew up in that environment. I've taken things that I've learned from being on a council estate that I use now in my professional life that only I know from being on a council estate that I know people that are in the same industry as me. They didn't grow up like I did. They just haven't got the same the same swagger with it. And it's and a lot of that. And a lot, and a lot, a lot of it's like ability. A lot of it's like I go to jobs, I get reoccurring jobs because people like who I am, and people like who I am because I'm street smart and I know what I want. And a lot of that just comes from the grit and determination of growing up where I grew up. And where people did you grow? Are, Birchwood, Birchwood, Beanwood. Oakwood. Beanwood. I'm going to do that now. Well. For the man who's still in the area, you know you are. But I grew up there as well, and, and it is is one of these estates that was built in the 70s or 80s yeah. and is, is quite a modern estate in that sense it was classed as a new town yeah. and it is y- your stereotypical council estate you know oh yeah there's Massive. five boozers <laughs> there is there's there five boozers in a, in, a two, in a one square mile two square mile we, we were a quarter deck family <laughs> we were a quarter deck family praise be the quarter deck <laughs> still there still pumping shout out to the quarter deck <laughs> look it up if you're not there um what my point about mentioning the boozers is that, that this is one of the things I will be mentioning throughout this is, yeah. is alcohol abuse. Yeah. And I think my, my family have suffered with it. We've had we've had drinkers in our family through oh, every yeah. generation almost. But I think that's a working class thing as well. My my nan has a plaque in the quarter deck because she's a golden certified boozer. <laughs> she is a golden certified <laughs> boozer. She is. She is. And I know you know I know you know I can watch that. I'll tell you I'll tell you a funny story actually. I tried to I, I tried to out drink your nan one day. <laughs> she drank a bottle called gold label. She I, did I, drink I, gold I, tried label. Out, I I drank sixteen gold label in one day. Kids it isn't clever. 
but it was a, it was a party trick at the time. Yeah. I dropped sixteen gold label. And I was in bed for three days. Do you know what? I'd never tried it. I'd never tried it. And then after a funeral, after she passed years back, we all went to the quarter deck after the funeral, and I had a gold label. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> but you know what? It was that was part of like who she was. It was yeah, part of yeah. her. She was like notoriously known in the estate for being rolled around by my uncle on a wheelchair and going to the quarter deck. And that was part of her growing up. That was her. That's taking me back. So we all went back to the quarter deck and had a gold label afterwards. And it was it was like that was. That was the best bit of it, of like remembering her life. It is, and it's always like, as a kid, I hated my dad being in the pub all the time. Yeah. I hated him being there in the pub all the time because you think he should have been at football with me. Now, this isn't, yeah. I just want to go on record. I, I love my parents to death. Mm. They've given me everything I've got, the skill sets that I've got. They've also given me some other bits that I've had to work on. You know, I've, I've been an angry kid in my days and all the rest of it, which we'll touch on later in other episodes. But seeing your dad in the pub all that time and being around working class men all the time also yeah. gave me a lot of skill. I, you send me the booze and now I can, I can spot someone who's going to kick off in three seconds flat. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I can see it's yeah. going off before it goes off. Yeah. I've got a street awareness yeah. based around my dad being in the pub yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. Sure, I probably had too many quavers and drank too many <laughs> Good though. But that, that's the kind of thing we're talking about on this podcast is, is... And I met a lot of people in the pub, like friends and stuff, family friends and, and people like that. You meet a lot of them in the pub, so there are, there are, there are, there are, there are good things to it as well. You, while, whilst all that's going on, there's an underlining of like humbleness almost and community yeah exactly yeah, there's, yeah. A massive, there's a massive bit of community yeah there. I've got videos now I've still got like VHS videos of like Halloween parties at the quarter deck and I'm running around like with kids that I look at and I'm like oh, I still speak to them on Facebook I've still got them and I still see them like around the estate and stuff and oh that's where it all sort of started that's and you know nice. what it was the part of working class community the pub was often the heart of the community and that pub yeah. that you're talking about opposite yeah. it is a primary school yeah. opposite that is a corner shop and a chip yeah, yeah, yeah. it was typical little little village type yeah. little town centre type mentality yeah, yeah, of yeah. everything in, in one place a hub. Like football teams that's one thing that I will go on to say is that the amount of good footballers that have come out of that area because they've got perhaps nothing else to look forward to. I'm related to a few of them. You're related to a few of them, you are. <laughs> We've seen boys that play for City, boys that play for Burnley, Brown, Jordan, people yeah. like that. They've, yeah. come, they've, they've come through it and they've they've managed to stay on the straight and narrow. Yeah. But the, the, the very grassroots level for me, yeah. like the football teams that I played for, wasn't the best, I'll, I'll admit. You know, yeah. great in the air. That was about it. I, I go down to uh, F- Fozzy, Forest Park, a park in Birchwood near us, and go watch uh, my cousin Ben play weekly like I've been to him a few times he's still good still good at football but that I love that just going down to my local park and just watching 22 lads kick the crap out of each other yeah off stinking class. avail yeah class stinking avail yeah. Yeah. Lucas Aid sails through the roof yeah <laughs> I love that I love it, that you're right and that's one of the fonder memories that you get from council states is that community is the sport and that kind of brings me on to talking about the schools in them areas yeah because I left school with no qualifications due to the disruptive <laughs> alcohol fueled, sometimes yeah. violent, sometimes erratic lifestyle that I grew up in. And right. it was hard for people to school me in that environment. And I've got, I hated school. Yeah, but I, I look did. back now and I love it. Yeah. Because I could see that there's good people there trying to do good things for me. What you don't was, realize what, what you're schooling like because with a few years difference with us. Similar, similar. I, 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 at school, I hated it. And, and I always I always thought it, because I knew I wanted to be a dancer or I knew I wanted to be in performing I always thought that as a kid that school was useless to me because I was just there because I had to be there and the more important work was going on after school when I was going to dancing and, and I was going to stage schools and stuff like that but actually actually now as an older person who's sort of had success in the stuff that I worked on outside of school hours I realised how important the ones in school were because that's where that's where I learned to talk to people. It's where I learned. It's where I learned to hustle. It's in, you know, in the playground with your friends, and you learn who your best mates are, and you learn who snakes are, and those like little opportunities to experience that. I experience that now. Just the snakes are a lot older and they've got more money, but it's the same. It's the same attitude. Absolutely. And I learned that in school. Absolutely. And, and I, went, I went to four different primary schools, all within Birchwood and surrounding areas. I went to loads of different schools. Mainly because my mum was a teaching assistant, she was pain in the ass, and would fall out with loads of teachers. So we'd end up having to <laughs> move and stuff like that, yeah. But um, but that, I guess that's part of it as well. Is I went to so many different schools and so many different things. I got an early taste of taking a bit of what I like out of somewhere, putting it in, taking it, making it as part of the person I am, and then moving on. And I've used that in my dance career. I'd go to several dance schools when I was kids, take one style, move on, and it created sort of this freestyler dance person that I became, and that's ultimately. The person that won Britain's Got Talent when I did because I had a mix of everything and 
a lot of what I learned was from school. A lot of what I learned from school. I've still well, you probably didn't realise that at the time. God no, I hated school, hated it, couldn't wait to get out. Yeah. But now I wish I could go back and do it all again. Yeah, I, I feel it, I feel it I because do. I've I am now looking at my skill set, having come through lots of ups and downs in business. Yeah. You went into dance and media, I went into business. Yeah. Yeah. I had to fight my way into business. I was overlooked for jobs because of a lack of qualifications. I was overlooked for jobs because of the way I speak, the way I dress, you know, I had that chav in the boardroom feel, and yeah. that's why we're calling chav in the boardroom. But just more recently, as I've had, a, I've had, I had a bit of a failing in business, I had to look back on the skills that I didn't have, and it was more of the academic stuff yeah. for me able to track my accounts and stuff like that. So I actually wish I would have done a bit better at school. Oh, because absolutely. as much as the hustle that I picked up, like you say, and as much as yeah. the grind that I picked up, there's a, there's a hole in me, and it's that academic bit. And I think you need it. Oh, I, I think started. You, the you know, I, I turned fourteen, and you know, I was very, I was very lucky, you know, to do to do the things I've done. I was never taught about finance at school, and so all of a sudden I came into all this money. I had no idea what I was doing with it. No idea, and I'm still, I'm still not suffering, but I'm still suffering from that loss of learning when I was younger. I'm still making amends for silly financial things I did when I was a kid, when I was making loads of money. Or I was, I was, you know, more relevant than I was now. For you know, I was doing loads at the time. I was making loads of money. I wish, I wish I had more education on what to do with it and how to invest. And I had nothing. We had nothing like that. And we didn't even have people outside of school that could help you with that. We didn't have money for a start. Yes, yeah, so exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You can't that's earn money I mean. if you've not got it. Well, exactly. My parents that. weren't investing in anything. No. It, was going, it was going in the pub. It was going on bills. Well, that's the thing. And I couldn't, I couldn't rely on my parents because they'd never had money. They, yeah. didn't, they didn't know what to do. You know, my mum, bless her at the time, I'd come into all this money and this fame overnight. She had no idea what she was doing. And I had all these managers and people trying to grab me and take bits of me and wanting to do this. And my mum just going, hang on a minute. I don't want any of that. I want just George to be George. But we didn't know what that was because that had changed overnight so it was like a massive massive learning curve and I'm still learning from that and it, it, you're right in what you say because the, when you when you get that hustle and that grind and, and you're still learning normal what, what most people would call normal life and that's why yeah. we're talking to people in yeah. these underprivileged areas because they don't live what society classes as a normal life no. No. it's normal for them it's yeah. not normal to the to the to the most part to the middle classes to the upper classes and this isn't a war on the middle or upper classes no no because no. they've given me a lot they yeah. they're the ones that have lifted me up actually and helped me get yeah. into business and yeah, that sort yeah. of thing but a lot of those things that you don't learn like finance and economics and stuff like that i still suffer that now like you've just said i've, yeah. I've had clients that have given us 50 grand for a project through one of my businesses and i feel bad taking it yeah even though that we're good at what we do and it's we're going to deliver quality yeah, yeah, yeah. and grow their business yeah me as, as a person as wayne not the chav in the boardroom as wayne i am nervous by having fifty thousand pounds in my I bank i would be shaking giving somebody 50 grand because that's so much money that's like to somebody that's grown up the way i've grown up you can do so much with 50 grand you can change your life and it's not a lot of money these days in 2022 it's, it's peanuts, it's in the peanuts. Of things. but to people like me it's a lot of money and it can go a hell of a long way hell of a long way so let, let's go back to that we talk about money we talk about the fame that you've you've, you've gone through your school life you've yeah. picked up these these hustling and grinding skills yeah at the cost of probably your academic skills yeah and then you go on and you're propelled as a child star almost yeah what goes on with that how do you cope with that you don't really and i think i think a lot of it is because you are a child it's 14 it's confident you know what i mean i thought i could take on the world at 14 so you just you just do you just go along with it and i wasn't i wasn't feeling the stress of it my mum was you know the people around me my family where they were feeling the stress of it because they could see it happening i was just going with the flow i would wake up and i'd go right here's your itinerary for the day and i would just go yep 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 not at any point was i thinking oh i miss me mates you know i miss being home i just want to walk around. i didn't at the time because you're 14 and i was getting loads of attention off girls i was i was living my dream man so i was just just cracking on with it but actually when it all slows down it was only afterwards that i was like I missed out on loads you know yeah. never been on a lad's holiday Never been on a lads holiday with mates at like 80. I wouldn't now. Couldn't think of anything worse. Who's going to go on a lads holiday with someone who can break down? That's wild. This is the thing. Absolutely. Show everybody up. That's why he's never been on a lads holiday. I never went to college, so I never, I never, I never experienced like going to college every day, like meeting new mates and like just that all kind of like that part of growing up that from, from 14 to 18, all of that. I missed all of that because of the fame. I remember. And I missed that. I, and I bet you do because it is that's I a do. big part of growing up but what yeah. really hit me with you thinking back to kind of my understanding of your fame was I seen you at a party with Paris Hilton Paris Hilton <laughs> and I went what what like three weeks before he was outside the same chippy as me yeah and now you're at a party with Paris Hilton like that must blow a kid's mind 
do you know what? I was more interested in Keith Lemon because he was there. <laughs> yeah, I found him so funny. Yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and Chipmunk was there, and he, yeah. was, he was a good, and he's one of my favorite grind rappers. So I was more excited about that. But in the reality is, when I look back at it now, people go, "You were there that night." And Paris Silton was there. Lady Gaga was there. It was a crazy night. It was a crazy night. But I just remembered it being really late. I was really young, so I couldn't drink. We were in a nightclub, and I just didn't want to be there. I tried to go home, yeah. play RuneScape on my computer with yeah, my mates. Well, I can, I can imagine. <laughs> I tried to get online with my mates. And again, going back to what we just said about your parents being in the booze and stuff, we are kids, I didn't want to be in the booze. No. Same thing, you're a kid. Yeah. You know where you're supposed to be. It's in your bedroom around yeah. your mates, isn't it? Exactly. There's an innocence taken away, I think. Yeah. In, from, from both ends of that spectrum. Yeah. You know, child stardom takes some of your innocence. Being in the pub all the time, you folks. And, it, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's hard and as well. And I, I understand it. And as I get older, I understand it more and more that you know people from where we grew up they work their asses off week in week out they look after numerous kids they get their lives together they've got everything running and they have to work their asses off to do that and then they get a bit of money and free time at the weekend and they want to see the mates in the boozer and I get it I get I get why my parents were in the boozer I get it but I don't know I don't know that's that's lifestyle isn't it that's I, the life I attribute that I attribute that to manual work as well yeah if you're a cleaner if you're running around a school if you're if you're digging roads up if you're a builder and you're around all them other lads and you've got three kids and and mum can't work and there's benefits involved yeah you know there's a lot of there's a lot of stress on on, on especially on single parent families Absolutely. imagine that yeah, single yeah. parent families that's what I was yeah I think that's what some of the some of the, some of the girls I knew growing up, growing up that had kids early and stuff like that and they're single parents I think wow I've got two kids of my own now, yeah. and I'm, I'm we're doing okay. And yeah. I think to myself, Jesus, how how would a single parent cope? And you see a lot of that on the estate, and you, you think again, what what impact would that have on their children? I was one of five. I'm one of five, and and my mum was a single single parent on the estate for for the majority of my childhood. My dad wasn't around, so it was just my mum and five kids, and we were all this literally a year between us all. We were all very close in age. And so I, I, I underestimated it because I was just, we don't understand the work our parents are going through as we're kids. We're just, we're just kids, aren't we? We're innocent. Yeah. But now I look back and think, it's a graft. Big it graft. It absolutely is. And then, and then let's, let's move that on a little bit now. So yeah. you've, you've gone through your school bit. You've hit yes. that child stardom bit. Yeah. Then you become a business. And, and this, this podcast is about business. Yeah. Because it's about affording people the same opportunities to get into business. I was overlooked for a, 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 a job because I didn't have a degree. I then went into another job that I got, but everybody else in my team had a degree. I ended up being their manager, but there was two people in that team on right. a bigger salary than me because I didn't have a degree. I right. was managing them. Yeah. So I want to know how that transpires for you. How does that work for you? Because you mix in circles where you're going to West End auditions, you're going to film auditions, TV auditions, you've done Wally Road. Yeah. You walk in as a kid off the estate, you haven't been through all that classic training, I'm sure. No, none of it. Your Britain's got talent and none that rocketed you. So what, how, what, how does that feel? So the natural progression for anyone that does what I do is to get a scholarship or to pay to go to a drama school after sort of school finishes. Obviously, I didn't have that luxury, but I did have the luxury of winning a reality TV show. So I was a name that people wanted, but I didn't have any of the background of what all the people doing what I did had. So I just embraced who I was. I just embraced who I was. It was as simple as... I got auditions for things to play chavy parts. I was like, well, I'm bloody perfect for it. Let's have it. Do you know what I mean? So it was, it was about embracing what I had that I could do well, that I know these people that are, even if they're trained, they could have gone to RADA, Art said the best schools in London. They're not going to teach them what I knew on the estate. If somebody's going to play a chavy kid on the estate, I'm going to do it better than all of them yeah. because I've lived it. So, really so, so, so yeah, it. so it was about, it was about taking what I had, embracing it and going, actually, this is a skill set. And I can use it in any industry I want to use it in. It's just about finding the right holes to put it in. And then that's what I did. I, I just love that. I love that because that's that's nailed on what this is about. Yeah. Taking what you've got, even if the, if the cards that you've been dealt are not as, as good as those sat next to you or those on the nicer state opposite you, take what you've got and make the best of it. And Absolutely. I think, yeah. I think that's just made the hairs on the end of me. I'll stand up. <laughs> that, that's that's what exactly did. what it's about. Waterloo Road, I, you know, I played a chavy kid um, and then I started getting, and people say, oh, it's typecast, reputation, you're playing bad lads, you're playing, I'm bloody good at it. So I bloody will. Yeah. And it'll pay the bills and it'll do well. And when people want to have somebody in their show that fits that role, because they're always there, you can't listen. You can't have bad without the good. There's no good if there's no bad in these shows. You know what I mean? I will keep doing it. That I will only happens keep in doing your it. industry, though, surely, because you yeah. don't go to a great no, salesman. Of course. You go, oh, you've been a salesman all your life. You'll keep no. being a salesman no. while you're a footballer. No. You'll always be a footballer. So oh, no. Typecasting is only a word that's thrown about in your industry, surely. Like you just said, if you're good at something, yeah. you're doing it. Abs absolutely. But also, but. 
you know, there are other things. So I'm only speaking of my industry because that's the only the industry I've experienced. And do you know what I mean? But you know, I, I I remember being a kid and on on the street that I grew up in. It was a really hot day. Everyone was off school, and we wanted to earn some money to go to the shop. So I remember me and my sister picked up this board. We put a strap round our neck and had this board. And we bought loads of sweets from a really cheap shop and just sold them on the estate to kids and made loads of money. <laughs> and then we could go out, and then we went to the shop and got the sweets we actually wanted. And even just things like that, industrious, just industrious. industrious, yeah, yeah. And you only learn that, you only do that. You won't catch kids doing that everywhere. But on my estate, that's what we were doing. And what? What what's the, the main thing you've, we've mentioned resilience and thick skinned and industrious when you look back from growing up underprivileged and on your estate yeah. what's the main thing you take from it what's the what's that one thing that you you look back and you go that's me I the thing I love most about myself is my ability to not give in to drama it's not give is I see things happen all the time in my industry I. I this is, the, the industry I'm in is, is drama it is this, literally everyone wants drama everyone wants gossip I'm I've always been honest I always speak openly and I always see things from a particular point of view and I look at things and I go I just don't care I've just I've seen enough in my life that whatever drama's going on I'm not getting myself involved in it I'm going to focus on me and push me to the levels I need to go to and there's no distractions that stop me and that's because I grew up in a place where there are distractions everywhere. Yeah. And so you learn to block that out. And if you can learn to grow up on a council estate with where there are kids around you selling drugs, there's kids getting into alcohol, there's kids fighting. There's, if you can distract yourself from that and grow up in a council estate and make your way out of it, then nothing in life can distract me. That's, that's and that's, a, that's, that's the one thing I'm point, about. the drama thing, because I, I mean, my dad died quite early on, so that, that, that kind of added to my anger. But I yeah. was always, I always found that, that I explode a bit quick because of the drama on council estates, so it's yeah. had a different effect on me. Yeah. I'm like, well, oh, Christ, there we go yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's going to kick off in the pub, it's going to kick off at school, yeah. someone's going to rob me, someone's going to do this, yeah. and that. So I have this trigger. It's, it, it's, I've had to work on that trigger as I've got older to wind it in. Yeah. Because as a, as a, as a late teen and in my early 20s, I was a ball of angry fire. Yeah. Because yeah. of my experiences on the estate. Of course, yeah. You managed to channel your energy. Yeah. And not react yeah. and, and avoided the drama. But, but that, that's, that's I, I was lucky, you know what I mean? I, I had a, a very pushy mother who was would, wouldn't let me go out at night if she knew it, you know, I was going out and knocking about with people. She had five kids to look after and a job. She didn't have time to stay in at night and just watch her five kids. She was tired, she brought it good to bed or whatever, but she did. She made sure that we were there and we weren't leaving the house and we weren't getting up to no good and stuff like that. And as I look back now and I say, oh, I wish I'd have gone out and done stuff with my mates and I wish I'd have gone on lads all day. I've not done all these things that I missed out on. I also look at it as, but look what I've got. Look yeah, what I've gained from reason, it, mate. you know what I mean? And look and what I've gained from that, it. Would you I want to change it for the world. Absolutely. And would you have on that lads all day got yourself in trouble? Would you have then not been star of stage and screen? Exactly. So everything happens for a that's, reason. That's everything exactly happens it. For a reason. And, and the, 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 there's so much... Like we say, misconceptions that come out of council estates. Massive. You like to be a, a bank robber or a car robber or a drug dealer. It's little pockets on council estates that get highlighted, I believe. And it's, it's, yeah. we've got to go out and change our misconceptions. However, there are certain things that happen on council estates that are unique to council estates. Yeah. And I'm going to call these council estate quirks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I have, I want you to pick one because okay. it, the, there are things that you see on council estates that are very unique to council estates. And we look back at these things with, nostalgia and we look back at these things with a light yeah. heart and in the build up to this I asked you to, to think about what one of them things might be yeah. council state quirk yeah. what's the one thing that you look back and laugh about council states what's your quirk well there's a few I actually saw one um, it was a couple of months ago it was when we were in lockdown and uh, I because I still live on the estate I still live on the estate now and uh, it was in lockdown and it was we were celebrating something there was a day of celebrating something to do with the water i wasn't too into it anyway i looked outside of my window there were sofas everywhere <laughs> chairs everywhere like it was made up like the jubilee celebrations we've had and i walked outside and i was chatting to my neighbor and he was having a few drinks and i was having the best time and i was like so what's this about and he's like I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but we're just having a great time and having a drink and i think that 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 for me is part of is the best quirk is that 
You don't need a reason to celebrate on a council. You don't, you don't need a reason to have a good time with the people around you. No, you any right. day can be any day can be a Sunday. You're right. Any and day can be a Sunday. It, it, but that happens on any day. The, yeah. the, 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 the sofa's outside and the, yeah. and, the, and the table's outside. I love it. There's estates near where we grew up. You can walk down on just a normal Sunday afternoon. There's a full family there just chilling. Just chilling in the just garden. Chilling. You're not getting that in, well, we don't in have the Cheshire. Yeah, of course. You're not, you're not, getting, you're not getting that in Luxford where I live. No, no. Well, they've got Somebody's putting a couch outside and sat in now yeah. the are taking it away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the women are taking no, it, it away. No, it is, it's true. And I, 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 I remember, and just utilising this, uh, is it, maybe it's a quirk, maybe it's not, but I said this to you back in the day, like I, I, had, um, I had a wardrobe and mirrors and I had no dance studio, I couldn't afford to go dance studio. We just ripped the mirror, mirrored wardrobe off the front of the wardrobe and I stuck that in my garden and used that to dance with and that was my dance studio, was a broken mirror off a wardrobe in my garden. And Again, that, industrious. You wouldn't see that anywhere other than on a council estate, you, you just wouldn't. You'd be done for criminal damage. You would. <laughs> <laughs> you would. Oh, you have to fix your expensive yeah. wardrobes. Yeah, you would. That's you would. unreal, that's unreal. Now, the, 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 my, my council estate quirk, and it's a weird one, and unless you live on a council estate, you might not have seen this, Shopping trolleys in ponds. Everywhere. Why? <laughs> I, don't, I just... They've got brakes on them now, the trolleys, haven't they? Yeah, but yeah, well even annoyed. the ones with brakes. My, my, my nana and so she passed away recently yeah. and you walk under the subways near her, you know, remember Dunham Pond? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a shopping trolley there with the brake exposed. <laughs> so even the ones with the brakes that are supposed to stop outside Asda are making their way to the ponds. What's going on? I, I see them everywhere. I don't know. I, I think it's the kids. I think, I think people are walking home with the trolleys because they don't have cars, not everyone can afford a car. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? So, so you're walking home with your trolley, you can't afford to lift all these bags, you might be an older person, so you walk back with the trolley, the brakes started going, so it's getting pushed, you get to your door, you lift your shopping in, and there's a trolley on your doorstep, you think, do I want to walk that back to Asda? You've no, done that, you've put that's a getting left. You've, I'm not put putting it in a pond, but I've, <laughs> I've left it out, no, what I, what I might have done, is I might have left it outside the house and gone, do you know what, tomorrow when I go back to Asda, I'll take that with me. And someone's had it. I know, it's gone. It's gone. It's in the pond. It's in the pond. <laughs> so, it's so gone. It's in the pond. That was my council state group. Yeah. Shopping trolleys in the pond. If anybody knows what's going on with that, and you want to write to us on Instagram, yeah, let us know. If you work for a supermarket, maybe it's been keeping you in a job. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. But that was the thing for a while. I remember when, um, God, I must have been about 12, 13, and they were, there was a lad that worked on the trolleys in Asda, and he was giving everyone, kids, 50p to walk around the estate and find all these trolleys that I were remember. like in ponds and stuff I like remember. that. And we were getting money. They Probably might, stealing they, dust caps off cars at the same yeah, time. Yeah, <laughs> off the front of yeah. If anybody from the law is watching that, never <laughs> no, <laughs> no. So I mean, we've 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 talked about the nostalgia. We've talked about some of the more serious issues. We've talked about, but for me, it, it it's it's really about the the opportunities that are missed. Yeah. Because you might not have had a good education. Because if you've got trouble at home like I had, yeah. And again, I love my parents. This isn't a bashing on my own parents, but I've experienced things that most kids probably shouldn't have seen because yeah. of alcohol and stuff like that. Yeah. It distracts you to the point where you can't learn properly. You can't learn properly, so you don't get the same opportunities. It's true. And unfortunately, that's still going on. There's kids out there that are not getting the same opportunities. And the real driver behind this is to get into the schools, the colleges, the boxing clubs, the football clubs, and physically give back. And yeah. the one that, the one thing that I know about most is tech and digital. Yeah. So I want to give back on behalf of tech and digital. I think tech's smart as well, isn't it? Because even for me, I as a kid that grew up in a time that we weren't as techni- technically techy as we were now, I, I learned the most of what I learned online, just, just watching videos and stuff like that. So even for an industry of mine, which doesn't really require tech, or it does more so nowadays, but you know, it's a physical, it's a sport, it's an art, Tech is still super important, massively important. It was part of my growing up, it was part of being. So I think even for like, I see kids, I had a dance studio. I taught loads of kids in Warrington that grew up on the estate. Some of them stopped coming because they couldn't afford it, this, that, and the other. If they had the access, you know, to even an iPad, you could do Zoom classes. We've signed that like, in lockdown that that's massively important. There's so many ways that I was able to help kids through lockdown, through tech, that that's that's that is the only choice really I think to giving back is, is giving them tech because I think tech can get you anywhere in life I agree and that's that's why ticket. We, that's why we're doing it and, and you've just mentioned lockdown that's one of the things that really highlighted it for me was I've got family that had kids and friends who have kids at home yeah. and these kids from, from better backgrounds that are learning on top of the range yeah, Sony, yeah. saying Sony Bio like it's a Sony A's now yeah, 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 top, yeah. Of the, top of the range laptops Whereas some of the kids I knew didn't have, they were, they were trying to do it on their mum and dad's phones. They were trying to do homework on their mum and dad's phones because they didn't have iPads or, or laptops. Yeah. And that really kind of stuck in my heart a little bit. And that's why I want to, when, when you sponsor this show, 
and we and we put your name on this show like Dingy Bean have and, and Hebs Group who are a facilities management company in Liverpool who I've just forgot to mention with a with a council estate quirk sponsor apologies to Hebs um, to my brother so they'll be fine <laughs> um, I'll, I'll pay him back um, um, the, the money that, that people like Hebs and Dingy Bean give to us yeah. is, is A to power the show yeah. to pay for ads to raise awareness but there's a massive percentage of anything that we generate, and we are a not-for-profit, by the way, so anything that we generate is going into that tech fund, yeah. and we will physically record ourselves for the sake of content and encouraging other people to give back, going into schools and give it iPads and laptops to people so they can get yeah. online and they don't miss out on that sort of thing. No, it's great. So, that's, yeah, um, yeah, that, that's that's great. The, the, but useful and useful, useful as well, like you say, because any industry, tech is so helpful. So yeah. helpful. So I love. I love. That's why I want to come down here. That's why I want oh, to yeah. do it. Because I like. I said I see kids all the time. And even now I see kids. I've got nephews. I've got nephews that want to play like video games and stuff like that. But they can't because they've not got a computer good enough to play. Do you know what I mean? And and, and I'm not saying we want to give kids computers to play video games. But for anything, it's yeah, like it's just sad. It's out. sad. It's sad to see knowing that they've got friends who have got more money do things that they want to do and they can't because of money. It's 2022, we shouldn't see it, should we? No. You know, you've got people like Marcus Rashford going out doing the school dinners thing. You've got you've got people like us trying to do the tech thing. Yeah. I, I honestly urge any business, anybody with any level of wealth yeah. to for your corporate social responsibility and just for your own, for humanity, to give back. Go and give yeah. back locally because not that I don't yeah. trust charities and there's a lot of charities doing great work around the world yeah. but they've also got seven figure CEOs and I really disagree with that. Yeah. So I think if we give back at the level that we receive it as yeah. in straight back we yeah. give it straight back by way of funding projects and giving tech back and stuff like that that's what that's what things and projects and processes like this and should it, be doing. And it's it's massively needed. As I, I still live on an estate so I still see it and it's, and it's almost nice for me because now I have got a bit of money and a bit of success and I've got a platform, more importantly, and a name to raise awareness so I can do things like this and I get invited to do stuff like this. It's nice for me to be on the estate and be able to help. And I can and I do, do you know what I mean? I go around because when I'm not working, I'm doing nothing. You know, I'm either full-time dancing eight shows a week and then I'll get two weeks after where I'm doing nothing. In that two weeks, I will just hammer just helping out and doing everything I can. And, uh, do a fair bit of gaming I've seen as well. You've got to do a fair bit of gaming. Well, that's me downtime. That's me downtime. <laughs> that's, do you know that's what that what is? I game, I, game, I game a lot because I have, I have such like, I love going out and, and seeing people. I smile all the time and I'm friendly. I love people. And as part of my job, I have to be really nice to people. And I always have. I'll never say no to a photo to an autograph. But if you kill me in a game online, well, yeah, where nobody knows where I am. That's where you get the out. That's dick. where the real kid from the council state comes out. You start the four letter expletive from some random online. It is, it is, it is. Some American kid online's getting it. It's <laughs> <laughs> getting all the, getting all my burdens. Listen, it's, 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 today has been an absolute pleasure. Amazing. It's been it's been exactly what I, what I, I wanted it to be Good. it's going to help us give back honestly from, from the bottom of my heart I can't thank you enough and I just want to kind of wrap this up with a little bit from yourself on yeah. a message to people that are in this underprivileged situation on the council estates in, in the areas that don't get the funding and the opportunities that the rest of us might get what's the one thing you can tell them to do today to, to try and kind of pick them up and move them on I think communication is very important. I think talking to people, finding people who have got interests and in similar things. And it's very easy. And like I said, I struggled with distractions more than anything growing up in sort of underprivileged backgrounds. It's so easy to get mixed up in the wrong crowd because it's not the wrong crowd. That's just the crowd. Yeah. That's the crowd in which you live. That's the crowd in which you were born. And the only way I found I got out was to stand out from the crowd. Um, and that and that doesn't have to be performing. That doesn't have to be dance. That can be anything. But I find that I had good friends, really good friends in school that I could talk to that knew who I was, knew I wanted to be a performer, knew I wanted to be a dancer. And even if they didn't care, I never got any stick for it. I never got any distractions from them to do anything else. They were just happy to be my friends. So make friends and, and keep a tight knit of close friends because they are the most important thing to me. Now, as an adult that's grown up in the council state, my friends are the most important thing to me. So just know your friends. Know your friends and keep talking. So keep it sounds, talking, it sounds yeah. To me like you were networking. Yeah, yeah. That, well, that, that's you exactly it. Yeah, kid. absolutely. What, talk to what people. What a good spin to put on it because if you go within yourself and you let the things that happen to you on council estates and being an underprivileged person beat you down, you're going to stay down. You're, I think. You, you yourself are the worst thing to come out of a council estate. You're the best thing to come out of yeah. it, but you're also the worst thing. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter who you know, how bad you think someone is around the area, or local. 
nobody can get you down or stop you from doing anything other than yourself and, and the rest is just distractions regardless of where you grow up you have to work a bit harder I will say that I had to work harder than most I still have to work harder I still even now because I'm the kid that won Britain's Got Talent you know when I auditioned for dramas and other things now I still get knockbacks a lot more than others because I don't have that professional training but guess what I'm going to knock on a thousand more doors and I'm going to keep doing it and that's the way I've always done it so keep knocking. Unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everybody out there that's listening to us, if you're a business that wants to sponsor us, Mr. George Sampson, you've been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, brother. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Him. Thanks for having me on.